to hope in the dictionary. I mean, we all know it, but it's a feeling of expectation and a desire for a certain thing to happen. In the Bible, the, um, the word is, uh, in the Hebrew, ellipsis, something like that. I mean, expectation of good, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Confidence, all right? So I said, Lord, I know joyfulness is not an emotion. It's a choice. It's a choice. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy gives us that strength, choosing to look at the Lord, choosing to say, God, I know that this stinks. I hate every moment of what's happened, but I'm choosing to trust you, and the joy of the Lord will be my strength because I'm not allowing the enemy to zap my strength anymore. Not happening. And we all have a choice in this. So, so again, it says that I will declare. Well, first of all, let's think about this. And this is what I was meditating on. Uh, you know, of course, I love looking up all my words. And so restore means to render, to repair, to give in payment, to recompense. God wants, he's a God of payback. And he wants to restore double. And he wants to turn this thing around and restore and refresh it. So, but think about it. How, how do you become a prisoner of hope? What are you a prisoner of? Regret? Of defeat? Of anger? Bitterness? Judgment? What, what are you a prisoner of right now? You can be free in here, seemingly, but your heart attitude, your mental concept, your mental thought process, so somebody hurt me. Well, you can keep getting hurt as long as you're around human beings, but we have to learn how to address it, choose to forgive, choose to have healthy uh, you know, confrontation, healthy, um, you know, dialogue with the individual. But in the meantime, you know, I'm not going to let that person destroy my walk with God or that situation. And that, that was the goal of the enemy. So what are you a prisoner of? So as I was meditating on it, I said, Lord, I'm like, I felt like I was a prisoner of being in limbo. I don't know what in the world I was believing. You just go through such an array of, of different thought processes and um, you know and I had to just really come to grips with it and get before the Lord and 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 share I mean listen God knows your heart anyhow so you might as well just tell him what you're thinking <laughs> so I was telling him what I was thinking and um, you know and I just said you have to help me through this process God I said either you're real or you're not because I, I, I don't waste time and I've been saved since 1979, and I've seen God come through in so many different areas. And, and it's not always easy, right? I, you know, I, I, really believe, I really wish that, you know, when you became a Christian, you have problems anymore. Wouldn't that be sweet? But he teaches us how to get through it. And he said to me, you are not deprived of liberty, Tricia. You are not deprived of freedom. And it's all a mindset, and it's a choice. It's a choice in how you want to move forward. It's a choice in what you will allow me to do and remove that, that place of, 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 of grief. I'm not saying I'm over it, but, but I'm not where I was, right? And the pain of the grief. It feels like your heart, for those of you that have lost a loved one, it feels like your, your heart has been, a party has been ripped out of you, you know? And, um, but I said, Lord, I, I want to be a prisoner of hope. I don't, I don't want to live through this. It's too stinking hard, I'm going to tell you. And if you want to stay in that place of, well, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm talking from me. This is how I was looking at it. I don't want to be in that place of self-pity. I don't want to be in that place of, oh, whoa, it's, look at what I'm going through. Well, we're all going through stuff. And, um, and it, it, he just said to me, not, he said, I want you to have an expectation of something good. That was not clicking with me. <laughs> How am I having an expectation of something good? You know? And uh, he said to me, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, how do I move forward without him? <laughs> but he said to me, you can, and I'll give you the strength. And he said, and you know, and I'll restore it to you. And I was mad at him even for that statement. What do you mean you'll restore to me? What? What are you going to restore? And, um, but, and then I, I laid it on the altar. And I just said, okay, I don't like your 
you're, what you're saying to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm choosing to trust you. I'm going to lay it on the altar, God. I'm, I'm choosing to lay it there. And uh, how, how many of you know there's a devil? Yeah? And he's, I said, oh, no. I said, you're not winning. You are not winning. And, and so he's slick in knowing how to, you know, just, it's the mindsets, people. If we don't know the word and we're not hearing from God, you're going to get stuck. I'm just trying to tell you, don't do it. Don't allow his lies. Don't allow his lies to hold you back. Because that's what he said to me. He said, Trisha, you can go through the motions. But if you listen to the lies, you're going to be stuck. You know, you can get in a political thing, and you can get into this thing. And listen, stop. Just get before the Lord. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Because God wants us to be united. To be united doesn't mean we're in agreement with everything. It means that we're moving forward. And that, that what is moving forward is, I'm not going to be where I was last week. I want, Lord, I am going to move in the miracle. I'm going to move in the mindset of a miracle where even in the midst of the darkest place, I have hope. Even going through this, that I have hope. Even though there's, there's anger, there's an array of emotions that you go through. But you know what? Again, he's faithful. He's true. He removes us out of captivity. He knows the end from the beginning. And I'm not going to be a prisoner of my circumstance. I'm going to be a prisoner of hope and hopefulness and that, all right, God, you know, you, you have uh, amazing things in store for your people. And he chose to let us stay here. He chose us to hold on to the promises that he's given us. He's chosen to allow us. Look at David. I was thinking about David in 1 Samuel 16.